أما الشبكة الأوروبية زين فكان لها أكبر دور في دعم كما تحدث الجميع على اهتمام تطوير البنية التحتية المصرية على المغرب واسمحوا لي أن أدعو الرئيس التنفيذي لشبكة جيت الدكتور إريك هاوزر ليتحدث كمتحدث رئيسي في هذه الجلسة أهلا وسهلا Good morning and my sincere thanks for inviting me to speak here. I thank you, Excellencies. I thank uh, Yusef for inviting me here and giving me the chance to talk to you. I apologize for not speaking Arabic. Jean uh, is a non-profit organization and multinational that provides network and services to research and education networks all over Europe and that means I have to deal with 30 plus languages in Europe alone so Arabic is not on my horizon at this point in time. However, I hope you will forgive me speaking in English. Um, I'm also inclined to walk during my speech, so if I, I walk, it will be very difficult for the translator, so I, uh, uh, you'll have to forgive me. Sometimes I get too enthusiastic. I will be talking about NRENS. NRENS stands for National Research and Education Networks, and I think they're a fundamental tool for most of the things that have been said by uh, the speakers before me. Humanity is facing many challenges at this point in time. We face climate change, energy scarcity, scarcity of materials, food shortages, an aging population. These are huge challenges for all of us. And the only way we can solve these problems is my true belief is if we all work together, not in competition, but collaboration. No individual, no country can solve these problems alone. Researchers all over the world need to work together. They need to support each other. They need to build on each other's work. They need to collaborate, not compete. We need to combine creativity and innovation of scientists, researchers and experts from around the world working together so that they can stand on the shoulders of giants. And I think that with NRENS we can help them achieve that. To communicate, to collaborate and to innovate. I will give you a couple of examples. In Tunisia, there were many epilepsy patients and data on them was collected by the hospital Charles Nicole in Tunis. This data was then transferred to the hospital Charles Nicole, same name, in Rouen, in France, where they went into an extensive data analysis so they could provide methods of relieving uh, epilepsy patients from seizures. This is a fine example of two countries, Tunisia and France, working together to solve a societal problem. In Tanzania, where I was last week, I visited the State University of Tanzania and they have an impressive drone program where they do research based with drones which they fly over areas with different sensors in there to take measure of the crop, of the geology, etc. That data is then transferred all the way to the Netherlands, to my country where I come from, to Wageningen University, which is our main agricultural university, the data is analyzed there and advice on how to uh, build the country, how to deal with the agricultural crops is sent back to Tanzania. Again, 
an impressive example of where scientists in Tanzania work together with scientists in the Netherlands to, with the goal to create more food. NRENs are connecting the world of research and education. They are an essential tool for collaboration for researchers. They provide connectivity, but so much more is needed than that. NRENs need to connect people and need to help people to access data, to use the new services, to develop skills and to collaborate with other people. And this seems easy, it seems like, you know, you, you develop a service and you make it available. Uh, however, I found out that it's more than that. Uh, my neighbor in the Netherlands is a professor in microbiology. And he knew that I was working for Géant and at some point in time during the day he came to me in the weekend and he said, I really need your help. I need to transfer a lot of data and I have no clue how to do that. And this is really worrisome because the tools for data transfer uh, in the Netherlands have been available for a long time through Surfnet, the NREN in the Netherlands, but still he did not know these tools were available. So providing the tools is not enough. We need to also train the users and make the users aware. And it's not only research. The E in NREN stands for education. And education is really important also in the context of solving the world's problems. Because we need to develop talent. We need to make sure that people are taught how to deal with digital environment, digital skills. And we need new people in ICT. And we can only get them if we train them. They need to become innovators. It's like Ms. Khalifa and His Eminency uh, Abu Ghazale just uh, told, we need towards, to go towards a new educational system that uses digital tools and is more aimed at individual education rather than generic. Uh, I, I, I really loved listening to your talk because I had uh, on my paper to talk to say um, would you go into a heart surgery now if you needed that when they were using the tools of even 50 years ago no you wouldn't and what is closest to your heart closest to your heart are your children and you give your children to an educational system which uses tools which are way older than 50 years and you do that and not just in the Arabic world, by the way, in Europe it's very much the same. We are lagging behind in changing our educational systems to be up to date with modern technology. And to make sure that we can develop individual brains rather than mass brains. We need digital learning spaces. We need micro-credentialing so that students can do one course at MIT, one course here in Jordan, and another course in Saudi Arabia, and still get a master's degree that is recognized worldwide. We need something like Netflix or Spotify for study books. Why do students have to buy study books while well, they can have a Netflix subscription and they can have every movie in the world? or a Spotify subscription and learn and listen to all the music in the world. Why do they have to buy individual study books? And therefore, you have to buy the same study books as your other students. You want to buy the study books that are good for you, and, and you don't want to buy them. You want a subscription system for that. So a lot needs to change. And NRENs can help with that change. They will not be the ones providing the digital learning and workspace perhaps. They will not be the ones providing micro-credentialing, but they will be the ones that provide the identification that is the basis for micro-credentialing. They will provide the portal and identification that is the basis for having a subscription uh, system for study books. NRENs provide the tools, not the means, but you need the tools to be able 
to have the means to change education. Enrants are in a unique position. They don't sell products and services, they're non-profit. They develop and offer solutions in partnerships with universities, schools and research institutes. NRANS help to enable teachers, students and researchers. And the uniqueness comes from a local knowledge and support, like RNU in uh, Tunisia provides local support to this hospital I mentioned. But they provide that support based with a whole background of international services that are shared by all NRANS in the world. So the portfolio they can share is much bigger than what they have low. And that means that all the NRANS need to cooperate and collaborate and share their services, share their connectivity, share their services, so that locally they can offer what is available in the whole world and not just the local stuff. We need strong national NRANS, we need strong regional NRANS like ASRAN, and we need to, that to grow together into strong global research and education networks. Don't work bilateral, work regional, global. We did this a couple of years ago in the transatlantic region. We found out, looking at the situation, there were many connections at 10 gigabit per second between several European countries and the United States. And we thought this can be done better. We can use that money more efficiently and build a better system. So we sat together, all the countries together, Canada, US, European countries, and we said, what if we share everything and we just buy 300 gig lines? We will have 30 times 10 gig, much more capacity than we currently have, at a much lower cost. We did this, we realized this in three months, and we built a really sustainable, resilient system across the North Atlantic, saving lots and lots of money, based on the memorandum of understanding that was one page, only one page, not thick reports. And it was based on trust. Lots and lots of trust between NRANS and the willingness to share and collaborate. And this is what I call for. Share, collaborate and build trust. So what should NRANS do? NRANS should listen to the users, to the universities, to the researchers, the teachers, the students. Understand their problems. Offer solutions, not just technologies. And don't reinvent. Look what's around. Take stuff that has been developed by other NRANS and reuse that rather than starting your own inventions. For example, we listened to users and a lot of users said we want to use several commercial products like Microsoft Azure. We need that. And so we went off and thought, what can we do to help them use that? First of all, connect Microsoft closely through our network so that performance is good. But what we also did is we did a joint procurement for the whole of Europe. For the whole of all the universities in Europe, we did a procurement with Microsoft. And then you're a forceful negotiator because you're negotiating on behalf of 50 million users. And we negotiated a really good contract with Microsoft so that universities can save money and universities can use that uh, Microsoft software without having to do their own procurement. And we should not just offer international connectivity or national connectivity. They should build an international collaboration. They should share resources, build in a community of NRANs and institutes that can help users end to end. And I think the finest example of that is Eduroam. Eduroam is the system where we allow any user any of any university elsewhere in the world to enter a campus, put your laptop open, and you're safely online on the Wi-Fi. No need to identify yourself, etc. Eduroam is now available in 100 countries around the world. And I'm very proud that Xi'an is delivering Eduroam to all the NRANs in the world. NRANs 
do innovation it's themselves and let's focus on big projects mostly to be challenged by demanding users like the sesame uh, synchrotron light here in, in Jordan that is a heavy user they know their IT they are highly demanding and they challenge us to develop new services and, and, and to deliver new sorts of connectivity and these are good the, we, we need those challenging research initiatives to, to make sure that we as NRANS keep continuously developing but the bigger challenge is once we've learned how to serve those specialists to translate those services back to the average user to make sure that every student has access to those services to make sure that every teacher has access to those services and every researcher and not just the very specialized ones and the funny thing is whenever we make it available to the average user they start using it in a totally different way than that you had ever predicted I found out in my life that I'm very bad at predicting how technology is used uh, to give you one example I was in uh, Atlanta uh, in the US in uh, 1994 for an internet engineering task force meeting and all of a sudden there was this rumor that Procter & Gamble was registering domain names for their products. They were registering soap.com, shampoo.com, uh, babyoil.com, etc. And all of a sudden we all realized domain names had become a marketing tool. And all of a sudden we realized that uh, this was changing the internet from a purely non-profit university environment into a commercial environment and I thought ah, I need to do something with this so I phoned home to Surfnet I was working at Surfnet at the time I said we need to register surf.net and surf.com before somebody else takes it what I should have done is I should have registered carinsurance.com which was sold for 45 million dollars a year later Unfortunately, I didn't know that. If I had, I'd probably not be standing here at this point in time. Our goals, our aims as NRANS are to connect people, to serve and support people with the services they need in a way they need. This may re require some fibers and some cables, but it requires much more. We need to foster and to nurture innovation in research and education. We need to be part of a global NREN community to enable and facilitate research and education, collaboration and cooperation around the world without any borders. Because NRENs are key to combining the knowledge of all the people in the world to solve the problems our society is facing. Thank you very much. Çok güzel, evet.